action as you dive near it. It grabs you suddenly, oh. and it doesn't let go oh until my. the pressure... What's going on, y'all? Attorney Tom here. As many of y'all know, I'm a catastrophic personal injury lawyer, and you cannot be a catastrophic personal injury lawyer in a port city without having to do maritime work. In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to a video called Delta P. Delta P stands for differential pressure. I have done a wrongful death case involving a commercial diver before. Essentially what Delta P is, is the difference in pressure between two bodies of water. It is a huge hazard for divers. And I know this video is about Delta P with respect to divers because of the description. This video has over 3.3 million views. So I assume it is gonna be interesting. So let's jump into it, see if we can learn something and I'll insert my comments as they pop up. This is a partial list of the commercial diving fatalities over the past 15 years. All have one common cause, Delta P. Two out of three commercial diving fatalities involve Delta P. It is invisible to a diver and it strikes suddenly, without warning. There is almost no way to escape once it grabs you. Real quick, before we continue with this video, I just want to point out commercial diving is extremely dangerous. A lot of people don't know this or don't really know that this industry exists. It's extremely dangerous. Tragedies happen all the time. According to this video, two thirds of the incidents occur with a Delta P incident. So essentially these individuals are sucked under the ground and held there probably until they run out of oxygen. And I'm sure this video is going to address that. Knowing what it is, where it lurks, and how to avoid its grasp is the subject of this video. Delta P stands for differential pressure. Our discussion refers to situations where the pressures between two bodies of water are dramatically different. In a situation like this, the bodies of water continuously seek to equalize themselves. In this example, the body of water on the right wants to rush to the body of water on the left by means of the pipe between them. The pressure exerted on the valve stopping this water transfer can be enormous, depending on the difference in the depths of the water and the diameter of the pipe. If the difference between the depth of water is 50 feet and the diameter of the pipe is 10 inches, the force of water exerted on the valve is nearly 1,700 pounds. If the valve was suddenly opened and your arm was near, it would be sucked into the hole instantly. Trying to remove your arm would be like trying to lift a car completely off the ground with one hand. And you're pretty much just stuck there until you run out of oxygen. That is why when commercial diving, it is very important to one, do it in teams, and two, have some form of communication line, some tethering to the surface. So if something happens, you're able to communicate with your team and they can come and rescue you. You could only remove your arm if the pressures between the two bodies became nearly equalized. But at the pressure in this example, your body makes a perfect seal, stopping the bodies of water from equalizing. The formula for calculating the force of water through a hole at a particular depth is the area of the hole multiplied by the difference in water depth multiplied by the PSI per foot of water depth or in the situation just described the 10 inch hole equals 78 square inches times 50 feet of water depth times 0 0.432 PSI per foot of fresh water depth equals 1,685 pounds of water pressure. Wow. If you are diving in salt water, be sure to use 0 0.445 PSI in your formula instead. You can't see or feel a Delta P situation as you dive near it. It grabs you suddenly oh. and it doesn't let go oh until my. the pressure. Oh my gosh, let's watch that again. Y'all, look at this crap. It gets fit through a hole that it ain't supposed to fit through. You can't see or feel a Delta P situation as you dive near it. It grabs you suddenly, 
and it doesn't let go until the pressure is equalized. When Ooh. it's got you, it's got you. Exactly. You ain't getting out of a Delta P situation alone. So again, you're either going to get contorted and sucked into some weird position and probably die pretty quickly, or you're going to get pinned and just run out of oxygen. Not a good way to go either way. As you watch the following recreations of actual Delta P incidents, ask yourself if you have, on occasion, ventured into situations without being thoroughly prepared. Diver 1 enters the water behind the dam structure in order to clean the strainer of the dam's drain. When the drain is cleared, the tremendous force of rushing water through the drain grabs hold of Diver 1, sucks him partially inside and traps him. Diver 2 enters the water to help Diver 1 and becomes trapped also. Diver 3 enters the water to rescue Divers 1 and 2 and after 40 minutes returns to the surface with both divers. They are dead. Diver 3 was hospitalized for injuries suffered in the rescue attempts. So during incident one, they were diving in the team. There were at least three divers and it appears that they found out about the Delta P situation relatively quickly, although they didn't specifically address that. The issue that I see here is that if you're cleaning a drain, it is foreseeable that when the drain gets cleaned, there will be a Delta P situation. So in order to combat this, you need to clean the drain the appropriate way. And let me just clarify, I'm no expert in commercial diving the act itself, but I imagine if any commercial divers are in the comments, how would you go about safely cleaning this drain? Additionally, I don't see any Delta P precautions, especially if you're going into an incident where it is foreseeable, such as tethering to the surface or having some line of extraction or a valve shut off if and when a Delta P situation occurs. So really sad situation, two people died. And it sounds like they just ran out of oxygen. A scuba diver was repairing a pool bottom at a depth of 10 feet. He came close to the open pool drain and was drawn against it. His body made a perfect seal against the drain. He was diving alone and had no tender at the surface. No one knew he was trapped. He ran out of air and drowned. Wow, in 10 feet of water in a pool. Nobody knew he was trapped. He just slowly suffocated. The issue here is the diver was alone. He didn't have anybody watching. He didn't have anything tied to the surface where if you're diving alone, he could potentially extract himself out. From my very limited understanding, the most important thing for a commercial diver is a line of communication. And you get a line of communication by either having a team, i.e. multiple divers, or by having some sort of line with the surface and having somebody at the surface who can monitor the line if anything goes wrong this was literally in a pool doesn't seem dangerous at all yet somebody died two scuba divers entered a water tower to unclog a drain using a fire hose to blast away the silt and mud that was clogging the drain the drain suddenly opened a great suction immediately occurred Diver 1 was pulled into the drain. Visibility was zero. Diver 2 did not know that this had occurred. Diver 2 surfaced, thinking Diver 1 had already come up. Diver 2 made repeated but unsuccessful attempts to find him. Diver 1 ran out of air and died. Neither diver was tethered to the surface, had communication with the surface, or with each other. This poor guy or gal literally slowly suffocated to death drowned because they had no line of communication if they were both tethered to the surface diver two would have seen that diver one was still tethered in and in the pool and could have literally just followed the line to diver one communication a surface supplied diver was working offshore in 86 feet of water on a well re-entry project 
He was using a drill string to hook a trash cap inside a 13-inch well casing. The first attempt failed to catch the cap. The diver was asked to stand by the hole to make sure the string caught the cap. He reported when he saw the cap was hooked and began to leave. The drill string was pulled to the surface rapidly. Because the cap was nearly the size of the casing, a great suction developed. As the cap came free, the rushing water grabbed the diver and forced one leg into the hole up to the pelvis. The diver was killed. So this incident was clearly a procedural issue. The diver hooked up the cap. However, they had no business removing the cap while the diver was still present. The diver did his or her job and then they instantly brought up the cap. They should have hooked up the cap and then had the diver evacuate. Diver one enters the water at a hydroelectric generation plant. His assignment is to seal off leaks in a large gate valve. The three person dive team is assured by the plant's operating personnel that the gate valve is closed. Diver one surfaces and reports that he thinks the valves are open. The winch is started and closes the valve. A 30 inch sluice gate is manually cranked shut. The dive team questions the plant personnel. The valve indicator shows the valve not fully closed. Plant personnel reply that the indicator is never correct and typically the valve is cranked until tight. Diver one re-enters the water, convinced that everything is okay. In a few moments, he begins to scream. The dive supervisor tries to contact diver one on the intercom. The tender and supervisor pull the lifeline and umbilical. Both have broken from their attach points. The gates are cycled open while waiting for the rescue divers. Two attempts by the company diver failed to locate diver one. Twelve hours later, diver one's body is recovered. So where to even begin for this incident? The divers were on the lookout for Delta P. They went down in the dam. They saw that all the valves were open. They came up. They said, hey, you need to close them. They said, okay, we're closing them. Are you sure they're closed? Yes, we are sure they're closed, even though they clearly weren't closed and it got a guy killed. They did have a tether and a life support system, but that broke. So a whole lot went wrong here. This definitely was a lawsuit against the company that told these divers that it was safe to go down. Maybe even a potential products liability case against the safety equipment that failed and just an overall really sad situation. Wow, okay, so that was it. The remainder of the video is how to prepare for Delta P. So if you are a commercial diver, definitely go check that out. But for our purposes, I don't really think we need to watch it. I'm really glad that y'all tagged me or notified me of this video. It's actually a great informational tool. I'm gonna save it. And if I ever have to do another diving case again that involves Delta P or a diving case that involves Delta P, I'm definitely gonna refresh my memory using this video. As you can see, it's clearly very, very dangerous. And maritime law is extremely complex. There's a whole nother layer of laws and procedure that is different than just normal law. And yeah, um, I don't want to be all pessimistic or negative, but I hope y'all learned something. You learned something. And maybe if you go diving for fun, you can be safer. All right, y'all. That's it for today's video. Please let me know in the comments what else you want me to react to and uh, consider subscribing to this channel. All right, y'all. Thanks. Bye.